system notifies him that in order to avoid injuries, the souls have absorbed the damage. And player Song Jinkook's soul has been used for this, so he now owns three souls. Sun Jun grabs the dagger and thinks this effect is amazing, so he decides to leave a few souls to use as a defense instead of absorbing them all. Lastly, he checks the trial leaderboard, and he is on the fourth rank, which means his rank went down by one. It's a little disappointing, but he thinks that's not important. All he needs to do is place within the top 50 to be a pioneer, and suddenly, he decides to enter the next trial because he is running out of time. Sun Jun enters the seventh floor of the tower, where the objective of the trial is to prove himself in 40 minutes, and the condition to pass the trial is that he has to clear three trials in the given time. If he dies or runs out of time, he'll fail, and if he passes, he'll get the skill win's grace. Sun Jun finds himself standing in a corridor and feels it's different from other trials he has had so far. Sun Jun doesn't feel any presence, and it's kind of annoying, but suddenly, he sees a bright light approaching him, and he enters the area of the first trail where he has to prove himself by overcoming fear. Sun Jun finds himself standing in a desert, and while he thinks it seems familiar to him, suddenly, a sand golem appears, so he realizes this place is making him go through his tutorial trial again. Sun Jun realizes he has to retake three trials that he has cleared until now, and he is confident he can win against a sand golem with his eyes closed now, so he wonders if it means the system wants him to hurry up and head over to the 8th floor. Meanwhile, when the sand golem completely appears out of the ground, Sun Jun wonders if the sand golem is this big because it looks at least three times bigger to him. The sand golem is about to punch Sun Jun, but he immediately takes out his sword and shield from the inventory and dodges the punch, he jumps up in the air, but he can't see the sand golem's core. While Sun Jun wonders if it relocated inside the body as it grew, the sand golem suddenly grabs him in its fist. Sun Jun, breaking the fist, comes out of it and thinks that if he doesn't find the core, he'll have to slice everything off. Sun Jun attacks the sand golem with multiple slashes and tears it apart, but it returns to its shape again, and Sun Jun realizes he must somehow find the core and destroy it. The sand golem gets angrier and tries to smash Sun Jun but he barely dodges the attack and runs, thinking it's not about dodging, but it falls like a ton of sand when the golem attacks. Suddenly Sun Jun gets half buried under the sand, and it pisses him off, so he gets up immediately and runs towards the sand golem to attack it. Sun Jun uses the skill Triple Laceration, which, using mana, strengthens the blade for three attacks, and Sun Jun cuts down the sand golem's hand with a single hit. Sun Jun remembers he was a little annoyed when his floor got an intruder, but now he is grateful to that night. Sun Jun sees the sand golem regenerate with sand, but he thinks he has to keep cutting it until he finds the core, so he cuts the sand golem from multiple parts but is unable to find the core. Suddenly, he notices the golem is getting smaller and guesses that the sand that makes the body of the golem a resource can't be drawn from the environment indefinitely, which is why it got smaller. In that case, Sun Jun cuts the golem in half horizontally so that when it regenerates, its size gets smaller and the core appears on its back. Sun Jun wonders if he spent about 10 minutes because the limit of the 7th floor is 40 minutes and he has to complete two more trials after this. So he decides to hurry up. The golem continues attacking Sun Jun, but he dodges the attacks and notices it has become faster after getting smaller. Sun Jun wants to play longer with it, but he doesn't have time, so he gets behind the golem and stabs its core, shattering it into pieces. The system notifies them that he has proven he can overcome his fear, and the first trial on the seventh floor concludes. Suddenly, Sun Jun sees the other trial approaching him, so he tries to immediately tries to extract the sand golem's soul but he fails to do so and gets moved in the next trial. Sun Jun is present in the area of the second trial, where he has to prove that he has overcome his own wisdom. Sun Jun sees that the area is the orc village from the second floor's trial, and the village is in the situation where he left. Sun Jun sees the orc hunters have arrived, and they are standing beside their leader's dead body. The orc hunters go berserk on the death of their leader, and Sun Jun knows a berserk orc is no measly rank monster. Suddenly, the monster rushes to attack him, so he activates the instant acceleration and three laceration skills and kills all of those hunters until one is left, but its arm is cut off. Sun Jun tells the monster that he has to stand by and watch as his family is dying, which infuriates the monster, and it tries to attack Sun Jun, but he cuts off the last orc's head with which the second trial ends. Sun Jun immediately absorbs the souls of those orc monsters before he gets pulled by the third trial, and his proficiency of necromancy increases by 6% while the number of souls he possesses increases to 19. 
Sun Jun's skill Hunter Dagger and Instant Acceleration levels up to D rank, and its proficiency reaches 100%. Sun Jun enters the third trial area, which is the trial capture the area from the sixth floor, and he has to prove that he has overcome his hesitation. Sun Jun is confused because the previous two trials were on the first and second floors, so he assumed this trial would be a replica of the third floor. Sun Jun sees the arrangement of the tiles is different, but he realizes the tower used the orc trial for wisdom, so he thinks he is an idiot for expecting logical things from the tower. Suddenly, Sun Jun uses health potion which is rich in vitality, to recover, which increases his stamina and magic power by 20%. After drinking the potion, Sun Jiyun in rage, throws the empty bottle in the water to pollute the Tower of Trials. But suddenly, the tiles start to blow up because of the water pressure. Sun Jiyun wonders if it's because he threw the empty bottle. After activating the effect of Assassin's Cape and increasing movement speed by 15%, Sun Jiyun immediately starts running because the tiles under his feet are breaking. He has only one minute left to complete the trial. Sun Jun knows he has succeeded in fulfilling the rules of all the trials up until now, so this means in order to pass this trial, he has to find the red captured tile, and until then, he can't touch the water. Sun Jun thinks he is a lot faster and water can't catch up to him. But suddenly, the tile under his feet bursts up, and the water touches him, due to which his strength, agility, and stamina decrease by 10. Sun Jun thought the tiles would burst in order and thinks that's what he gets for expecting the Tower of Trials to be logical. Sun Jun immediately uses instant acceleration and starts proceeding by stepping on the tiles one after another until he finds the red tile. Sun Jun thinks this annoying trial is going to end soon, but suddenly, cyclones emerge, and they start following him with no tact. Sun Jun rushes towards the red tile at full speed, but he gets hit by that water cyclone in the back. In the meantime, Sun Jiyun activates the Wrought Iron Pendant's exclusive effect, Iron's Protection, due to which the skin absorbs 10% of his physical damage. The Orc Hunter's soul is used to absorb the damage harming the user, and the soul destroys. But Sun Jiyun is sure he felt the shock and thinks the shield protection led him just before he took the damage from the shock. Suddenly, Sun Jiyun again starts running towards the red tile but the exclusive effect of Assassin's Cape deactivates. Sun Jun continues running while thinking if the instant acceleration gets deactivated too. He is done, so he immediately eats a hunter's soul, which replenishes his magic power. Sun Jun feels his power increasing and sees only a little more distance is left. But suddenly, the next time, he is going to step on bursts. Still, Sun Jun, using the pendant's exclusive effect, breaks through the water and lands on the red tile with such force that the tile cracks, and the number of souls he possesses reduces to 12 because he used the others to minimize his injuries. The water cyclones are going to attack again, but the system announces he has proved he has overcome his hesitation and congratulates him for finishing the seventh trial of the tower. As a reward, he receives the skill wins grace along with 15,000 points, and an additional item, fast boots, is also sent to his inventory. When Sun Jun returns to the lobby, he thinks this victory is the same as failing it, and at this rate, he is very uneasy about the 8th floor's trial. Sun Jun thinks luck won't work for him from now on, and he gets a notification that 1000 people have completed the 7th floor, so the system expansion starts, a skill shop is created, and a skill trial junction is also created. The system notifies that a permanent return is possible, and a floor invading system is also activated. These are the things Sun Jiyun has been looking forward to, but the most important thing is the one about which the system notifies him that he is a challenger who has been appointed as a pioneer on all floors. The system requests him to select his halo, the benefit he can get from being appointed as a pioneer on all floors. The system announces that a pioneer will be given unique traits, skills, and effects, so he has to choose carefully from the options of ruler, hunter, and monk. Sun Jun decides to look at the description first, so he reads Ruler is a halo that changes based on the person's performance and greatly increases potential in all abilities. Sun Jun reads the Tower of Trials, suggesting to him that this halo suits him the most, and then he reads that Hunter is a halo that anyone can adapt to, and it can exponentially increase the proficiencies of abilities and skills, which is not bad. After that, Sun Jiyun reads about Monk Halo, which is greatly influenced by talent and perseverance, and the longer he invests time, the shorter he'll become, so Sun Jiyun thinks it's bad. Sun Jiyun dismisses this Halo and chooses the Ruler Halo, and through its unique effect, the evolution of the unique trait starts. The system notifies that the choices are categorized based on the challenger's current ability, 
and tells him that his summoner, using the absorbed souls, he can raise powerful undead skeletons. Magic and swordsmanship will increase as magic swordsmanship and any related skills can be learned three times faster. As a creator, skills based on item creation will increase, and any related skills will be learned three times faster. Sun Jun chooses summoner, so the system notifies that the unique trait necromancy has been added as a trait for summoner, and a unique authority, skill synthesization, is also created. Suddenly, Sun Jun feels the halo gets absorbed in his chest, and he reads through skill synthesization. He can synthesize any two skills, and when skills are chosen from two different ranks, the skill with the higher rank will become the core skill. Sun Jun thinks it's freaking awesome that he can combine two useless skills and make a new one, so he immediately opens a skill list to choose two skills to synthesize. Sun Jun chooses the Extinction of the Weak and Combat Continuation to synthesize, and the system immediately creates a new skill, Forceful Breakthrough. For him, using this skill, Sun Jun can break through any restrictions or obstructions that are created through skills or innate abilities. Sun Jun is surprised by this skill because he thought he would be lucky if he at least got an E-rank skill from two F-rank skills, but he got a D-rank skill. Sun Jun thinks this skill is crazy, so he tries it one more time and combines Ranger's knowledge and fire resistance, through which he gets a new skill, Resistance Eyes. Through this skill, Sun Jun will be able to see even in obscured environments, and it also strengthens eyesight. But Sun Jun sees this time the new skill only increases rank 1. Sun Jun understands the result of combining Contempt for the Weak and Sustained Battle turned out good because of their compatibility, which means that Ranger's Knowledge and Fire Resistance are not compatible. Suddenly, Sun Jun lies on his bed while thinking that it feels strange with the Radiance reward from being a pioneer continuously and wonders if it is all due to his hard work or if he has just been lucky this whole time relying on his special ability. Sun Jun gets up instantly and decides to take a look at his rewards, so he checks the skill wins grace and reads it increases all speeds by 10% upon declaration of the skill's name, and its effect can be stacked up to 7 times. When the maximum amount of stack is reached, the skill receives a 1-day cooldown. Sun Jun thinks it's awesome because this means he can increase his speed up to 70%, and this skill also doesn't use mana. After this, Sun Jun checks the boots of swiftness he got as a reward, and he loves that all the rewards from the 7th floor have to do with speed. Suddenly, Sun Jun enters the skill store, where a list of skills is displayed from which he can purchase any skill. Sun Jun checks the skills sold in the skill store are unexpectedly of low quality, and they are pretty expensive. Sun Jun is shocked that the instant acceleration skill is selling for 8,000 points, and he sees a magic skill, Magic Circuit, which he wants, so he purchases it for 15,000 points. Sun Jun purchases another skill, Magic Resistance, for 12,000 points, so his body becomes resistant to foreign mana, and he thinks if he has this skill, he can be prepared if he gets affected by a skill like here Solidarity in the past. Simultaneously, Sun Jun uses magic circuit so the mana in his body forms a circuit and increases mana efficiency, and Sun Jun feels the magic circuit being engraved into the user's body. Sun Jun feels he is burning up, but when the circuit is created, Sun Jun feels his body is light, and when he taps on the floor with some force, the floor is destroyed under his feet. Sun Jun wonders if the mana circuit also causes his physical abilities to increase and is glad with this purchase. Sun Jun is curious about his new raising dead skill, but he decides to use it in the field because now is the time to decide whether to head directly to challenge the next trial or to return to the earth. On the other hand, a challenger is trying to recruit a hunter through the party recruitment board while he is sitting in the Great Calamity Memorial Park, where the emergency gate of the tower has appeared. Suddenly, three challengers arrive there and ask if he is still looking for party members and why he doesn't just hand over the gate entrance license. One of those hunters tells the hunter waiting to recruit members that his license will be fortified if he doesn't enter the gate within a certain period of time, so why don't he earn some money and give them the license? The hunter, who is alone, tells them that he has no thoughts of handing it over to them, but those guys get mad at him and ask him why he thinks he is not getting any requests to party up when there are so many hunters around. One of those hunters gives him a reality check that he is an E-rank hunter, and no one wants to party up with trash like him. While all the hunters there look at him with judging eyes, suddenly Sun Jiun arrives there, asking the hunter who is alone if he has a spot left in his team. Everyone is shocked when Sun Jiun tells the hunter that he is a C-rank, and when he asks if he qualifies to be a member, the hunter immediately accepts Sun Jiun and his team. Suddenly, the hunter who is making fun of Sun Jun's team member asks Sun Jun if he can't see the people waiting there, 
To which Sun Jiun replies if he is offended by Sun Jiun joining Li Qiao and Qi's party, then he should also join them. The hunter yells if Sun Jiun wants to die, but Sun Jiun warns him to remove his hand from his shoulder before he breaks it. The guy gets scared by Sun Jiun's terrifying energy, so he immediately removes his hand from Sun Jiun's shoulder and wonders if Sun Jiun is really a C-rank hunter like him. The hunter's teammates get happy to think it's their leader's energy, but the hunter corrects them it's not his energy and says since the people from the association are watching, he'll let it slide this time. The hunter leaves with his teammates, and Lee Chiawen is sad about why things turn out like this from the start. Sun Jun tells Lee that judging by the atmosphere, it doesn't look like anyone else is going to join, so he thinks they should head in through the gate. But Lee shockingly asks if only the two of them. A few minutes later, they enter the gate to the tower, and Lee can't believe they really came inside the dungeon. Sun Jun tells him not to feel nervous because he can deal with most D-rank hunters alone. But Lee asks if this is Sun Jun's first dungeon, to which he replies that it is right. Lee says this might come off as rude as they just met, but clearing a dungeon is a matter of life and death, so he feels like he has to point that out. When Lee asks Sun Jun what he thinks about the E and C-rank hunters who have a higher death rate, Sun Jun stays quiet. Lee tells him that most would think that the weaker E-ranked hunters would have a higher death rate, but in reality, it's the C-ranked hunters who do. Because E-ranked hunters know how weak they are, they sometimes get overly cautious, but those within the C-rank start feeling overly confident, which is why their death rate is so high. Lee says it's the same when it comes to driving, that the accident rate increases when a person is overly confident and that dungeons are much more dangerous than Sun Jiun thinks. Lee thinks they entered the dungeon without a tanker and healer, so he is worried because of how overly confident Sun Jiun is. Sun Jiun agrees he does have a point, and Lee says he might only be an E-ranked hunter, but he has a lot of experience in dungeons, so he asks if it would be alright for him to take the lead in the party. Tough, Sun Jiun wanted to take the lead, but he said it was alright, and Lee thanked him for his consideration and requested him not to be upset since this was all for the sake of their safety. As they head out, a lizardman appears, and Lee knows it's well known for using weapon skills, so he says he'll take aggro for now and wants Sun Jiun to aim for an opening. Sun Jiun agrees to do that and decides to see how hunters with a lot of experience can handle this, but he is shocked to see that Lee and lizardman are having a staring contest instead of fighting. Sun Jun only has three days since it's only a temporary return to Earth, so he doesn't have time to waste on one lizardman near the entrance. Sun Jun, while asking Lee to let him join, enters the fight, and while Lee tries to stop him because it's dangerous, Sun Jun uses instant acceleration and slashes that lizardman down into pieces. Sun Jun clarifies that he jumped into the fight because he was in a rush and hoped Lee understood. Lee says it's okay, and Sun Jun requests that he takes the lead from now on. After some while, when Sun Jiun kills all the lizardmen's coming their way, Lee thinks it's a one-way massacre, and he is stunned that he might even be witnessing the fight of a super rookie. Sun Jiun takes out a mana-filled core from the heart of dead lizardmen's, which will be beneficial during the alchemy or crafting. Sun Jiun stores those cores in Lee's bag, and Lee apologizes for not being of any help except as a bag boy. Suddenly, a giant lizardman tries to stab Sun Jiun from the back. But Sun Jiun avoids the stab by tilting his head and punches that lizardman with such force that its head gets stuck in the roof. Lee says they should talk about their cuts when they get out since it could get dangerous if they don't concentrate. Suddenly, Sun Jiun absorbs the souls of all the dead lizardmans while pretending to yawn, and as his proficiency increases by 0.7%, Sun Jiun realizes it's getting hard to increase his proficiency with D-ranked monsters now. Simultaneously, the boss room gate appears, and Sun Jiun is shocked they come to the boss room gate with just the two of them. Lee thinks clearing half of the dungeon wouldn't have been a successful run, but with Sun Jiun, completely clearing the dungeon is possible. Suddenly, Sun Jiun says he is thinking of entering the boss's room, and when he asks if that is okay with Lee, Lee replies it is okay with him, but he wonders if Sun Jiun doesn't need a break. Sun Jiun says it's fine, and when they head right in, they see the King of Lizardmen sitting on his throne, so Lee worryingly asks what Sun Jiun is going to do. Sun Jiun tells him to wait for a second, but when Lee asks if he doesn't have a plan or something, Sun Jiun replies that he doesn't. Suddenly, the King starts attacking Sun Jiun with an increasing speed, but Sun Jiun dodges the attack and thinks this speed doesn't suit the size of the King. However, Sun Jiun thinks it's not like he can't catch this speed, so he tries to stab the King but it hits Sun Jun with its tail, making him slam into the wall. 
Li gets terrified, but Sun Jiun immediately gets up because he used the soul to absorb the damage and, while smiling, says this monster should at least be this difficult so he can properly test his new skills. Sun Jiun tells the Lizard King that its throne is broken, and he feels like this is foreshadowing something bad. Suddenly, the king furiously blows out a beam towards the sky, due to which Sun Jiun is tied, and the system notifies that the slow movement skill is triggered. Because of this, all his movements will be slowed down by 25%. As expected, Sun Jiun activates the forceful breakthrough skill, and breaks the chains that are tying him. The system notifies that all the effects of slowness from all movements have been negated, and the Lizard King is shocked to see this. Sun Jun is also surprised because he was a little uncertain about the skill forceful breakthrough as it was created through synthesization, but it performs well. Meanwhile, Li is also tied with the magic chains, and he cannot move, so he tells Sun Jun to help him. But suddenly, the king rushes to kill Li. Sun Jun worriedly rushes to stop the Lizard King but he thinks he is too far to reach on time, so he immediately summons the undead to stop the Lizard King. However, the Lizard King breaks those undead with its sword, and Sun Jiun realizes they are inadequate. But in that one second he created, he uses the Wind's Grace skill and stacks it six times so his movement speed increases by 60%. Sun Jiun cuts the Lizard King into pieces so the system notifies that the dungeon boss Lizard King has been slain and the next dungeon boss will appear in 14 days. As Sun Jun absorbs the Lizard King's soul, his stats exponentially increase, and he absorbs one of the Lizard King's skills, Spiritual Eyes, which will allow him to perceive the opponent's invisible attacks during a match. On the other hand, a team leader feels bored because, besides the fact that three gates opened at the same time, nothing special happened. When he confirms with his team members that nothing significant happened, they tell him that there is nothing. The team leader knows, as usual, that when the advanced hunter party comes out after partially raiding the gate, the association's raid team that will soon arrive will finish it up by defeating the boss. The team leader thinks he is from the same association, so why doesn't his team get any commissions? He is jealous of other raid teams. The guy thinks if the advanced party clears the gate in one go, then his management team will receive a bonus. But that is only possible if they have an A-rank hunter, and he thinks it would be crazy if a hunter like that is there. In the meantime, Sun Jun and Lee come outside the gate, and the team leader sees that the third gate's advance party has finished their raid and is coming out. The team leader, seeing two people raiding the dungeon, thinks they probably came out after barely clearing one half, but he gets shocked to see the gate's color turn gray, which means they completed the dungeon. The guy shockingly asks Sun Jun if it is true that the gate raid has been completed, but Sun Jun asks him who he is to ask him that. The guy immediately apologizes for rudeness and says he is the one who is in charge of the urgent gates that have appeared in the park. The guy introduces himself as the team leader of the Hunter Association gate management team, Shin Wujin. Suddenly, when Lee asks Shin if he came to purchase the gate's ownership, Shin replies that he is right and that he wants to make an offer to them. Lee says that's not something he can decide because Hunter Han Sun Jiun raided the dungeon himself. Shin is shocked and asks if Sun Jiun raided it all by himself, then he must be an A rank hunter. But Sun Jiun corrects him that he is a C rank hunter. Sun Jiun says it's unimportant right now, and they should get to the main point of how much they'll give for the gate's ownership. When Shin says the gate management team would like to purchase it for 1.2 billion won, Sun Jiun is shocked. And this is how this man ends. Well, guys, if you like this video and want a next part, comment below with the word next. Also, in the future, I'll be bringing more and more exciting videos. Please subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, hit the like button, and stay tuned until the next video.